But I want to point out some things. Look at verse 2. Now, bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. Verse 3 says, she said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Then we jump down to verse 13. Naaman's servants went to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more than when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? Do you know? See, some of you are thinking, well, all right, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not doubting God. I haven't been praying for a long time. This is obviously for the other guy. Thanks, Pastor. Appreciate it. Okay, then, then this bonus material is for you. Because you know what we have here? We have, we have a couple of instances where some unnamed servants decided to speak up. And because of those unnamed servants, you ready for this? Naaman got healed. Some of you aren't catching this yet. See, we, we, we see Elisha, who basically just sat in his recliner and sent his servant to say everything. But to me, you know who the real heroes are? An unnamed servant girl who said, you know what? I heard about this prophet in Samaria. People get healed because of him. Naaman should go there. And, and then Naaman's servants, when Naaman is saying, I give up, oh, I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this anymore. And then there were some unnamed servants that said, whoa, 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 Naaman, don't give up now. Don't give up now. You've come too far. Get in the water. Don't stop. Are, are there some unnamed servants in this room who know somebody who's ready to give up? And you're the one. Hear me. You're the one that can go to them and say, don't give up. Come on. Hey, I'll, I'll lead you to the water. Don't. Don't stop praying. Don't give up on God. Don't separate yourself from people who love you. Don't do that. And you don't need the credit. That's why I'm glad that they're not even named here in this story. Because it wasn't about them. Mm. And it's not about you. And it's not about me. But if we see somebody who's hurting around us, maybe in this church... Maybe somebody in our circle of friends, students, maybe somebody on the campus, you see somebody who's just ready to give up. Could you be, could you be that nameless servant that can go to them and say, hey, come on, don't give up. I'm here for you. I'll listen to you. I'll pray with you. I'll take you to church. I'll lead you the way that you need to go. You might be ready to give up, but I'm not going to give up on you. I'm praying for you. You might even say you hate me, but I'm still going to love you, and that's going to drive you nuts. If you think I'm joking, we, we need some servants that maybe you're not going through what Naaman went through. Maybe you're not going through the grief that Naaman was going through, but, but maybe you have before. Maybe you've seen God do some things in the past, or maybe you just care so much about that person, you'll just say, hey, don't give up. I am there with you. Who is that person that you can reach out to this week who's on the verge of giving up? And you could be the one that could lead them to the water. Naaman, don't give up. Servants of God, don't be afraid to speak up. Naaman, maybe you need to go down a seventh time. Maybe you're a little frustrated. Maybe you're angry. Maybe you don't get it. Can I free you from the need to have it all figured out and just say, okay, God, I trust you. I trust you. You don't even have to like it. 
but you can say, God, I trust you. Naaman, don't walk away from the water now. Don't walk away from the water now. 